Welcome to another episode of the Giant Subtle Podcast brought to you by Citizens, the official bank of the Giant. Once a Giant, always a Giant. Happy to welcome <laughs> to the program Kurt Warner. We had him on our radio pregame show last year. We've had him here uh, during training camp. We've had him on our show, and now we get him on Zoom here in preparation for the NFL draft. Kurt, thanks so much for being with us, and uh, tell the folks what you're up to. Hey, it's good to be with you as always. Uh, always exciting times as we're getting ready for the draft to kind of prepare for next season and what's it going to look like. Um, you know, it, it is my off season. That's the beautiful thing. So I get some time to spend with the family and travel a little bit. But, you know, what I continue to do at all times is uh, I've got a QB confidential platform, whether that's my YouTube stuff where I'm breaking down these quarterbacks for the draft. I've also got a website, qbconfidential.com, in which it's a kind of a teaching and coaching website about the quarterback position, about offensive football. So those are the things when I'm not covering the league and watching tape every single day, uh, I'm building my platform and, uh, and trying to help those that are out there to, to better understand the position or if you're a player, a coach, to grow in the position. So it's kind of my way to give back, knowing that I probably will never get into full-time coaching. So this is my way to do it. Yeah, and I think just your tweets you put out there, too, are very informative, Corp, because I think they're very honest. Too, to be to, to be frank, and I think it's great for people like me who are in the building and cover the game but never played it like you to kind of get a feel uh, for what it's like to evaluate the quarterback position as a quarterback. Kurt, of course, you can find him on NFL Network. Uh, NFL Network will cover the draft. Make sure you tune into that. Go to NFL Plus. Watch his little three- to four-minute breakdowns on a lot of the top quarterbacks. I did that this morning to prepare for this, Kurt. Really nice job on those. Let's start with the Thank basics. You. When you sit down and you're ready to start evaluating college quarterbacks, what for you are the most important things you want to see from a quarterback that will predict success at the NFL level? Yeah. Well, let me first say it's it's a really hard evaluation uh, because what you're really trying to find is things that are translatable, right? Things that they're doing in college that they're going to have to do in the NFL. Um, and, and you want to try to find as many of those as you can. You know, what's so hard is that these college offenses are so different. You know, I still can't figure out why we haven't uh, made the, the hashes universal at every level. And so the game is the same at every level, whether it's high school, college, or pro. Like, because that, you know, that changes the game. You know, when you've got these really wide hashes, the amount of space that it creates, um, you know, making making the game easier offensively for quarterbacks, um, you know, finding more space. And so I don't know why we don't make it universal, which would help make it more translatable um, at the next level. But that's what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to figure out what, can translate. And that's across the board, although I will say I'm less focused on um, like the athletic traits uh, simply because A, I wasn't athletic. And so it's hard for me to really say like a guy that's really athletic in college, it's hard for me to say, okay, will that athleticism translate to the NFL or are they going to have to play completely different? So I don't look at that quite as much. That to me is just kind of a bonus. What I'm looking for is I'm trying to find moments within everybody's offense where they're doing things that I think they're going to do at the NFL level, running plays that they're going to run similarly to the NFL level, processing information, making certain throws. And then maybe the most important thing for me is, is technique wise. I want to see a guy, uh, what they are from a technique standpoint and how that carries them or how they struggle with that at the college level, because it is a transition. And um, yes, those are things you can improve, but those are hard things to improve when you've been doing something for a long, long time. And now all of a sudden you got to go and work at the nuances and the basics of, of technique and learn how to do that again. That's not something I really want to do at the NFL level. Uh, although, you know, Josh Allen, I think is a great example of a guy that you have loose mechanics um, and has continued to tighten those up. And when he plays within the mechanics, he's really, really special. So it can be improved. It just takes time and effort to be able to do that. So those are kind of the, the basics of what I'm looking for when I'm breaking down each of these quarterbacks. Yeah, and I think that makes a lot of sense. And the problem is that, Kurt, if it's tough for you, given what college offenses are doing, it's impossible for me, right? Because I don't understand these plays to the same extent that you do, where you see the formation, you see what they're trying to do, you know where the quarterback's supposed to look. That's, and I'm being completely honest, as someone that didn't play the position, it's hard for me to do that. So I try to look yeah. for certain things that I think, to your point, are translatable. One thing I look for, and I'd like to get your take on this, I want to see a guy be able to work the middle of the field, and especially in areas that are not wide open, because I feel like in the NFL, 
that's where you have to work. You can't just live on the perimeter. You have to be able to work those crowded areas in the middle of the field. So yeah. I like to see college quarterbacks be able to do that because I do think that's maybe instinctual is the wrong word, but I think that's almost a natural confidence you have to have to be able to work yeah. that middle of the field in those highly trafficked areas, which just, just to give an example, I think Drake May does that extremely well out of this particular class. So it, does that make sense as something that you should look for from yeah. college quarterbacks? Because that's something you have to I be mean, at the NFL. I, yeah, I think the bottom line is, is you've got to be able to read and throw the football at the NFL level, you know, but, but at the same time, when I'm looking at a play, and this is be the same when I, when I break down NFL quarterbacks, I break them down based on the play that's being called. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I can't sit there and say, well, he didn't throw over the middle very much. Well, they didn't call plays that were over the middle. Well, all I can say is this is the play that's called. How did you read and execute this play? Now, of course, the middle of the field is always going to be harder because there's more bodies there, right? There's more things that you have to negotiate. You have to see things, anticipate, find the window. So, uh, yeah, I understand your point, and, and it makes – a lot of sense that if a guy can work the middle of the field and see bodies and make reads and, and have a sense of timing and anticipation, that's always a positive, no matter what level you're playing at. It's just, to me, I'm not going to knock a guy, you know, so many people just pull out stats. Well, look what this guy did and look what this guy did here. And look at this, you know, yards per attempt. And to me, it's like, whatever, it's not apples to apples. Like if every one of these players, you know, had the same play called against the same defense, and now we could break down and use stats to to dictate who was the best. Okay, I get it. But you have to watch the tape, and you have to go, did they make the right decision? Did they might make the right throw? Can they make that throw? Did they make that throw the right way? Those are the things that I'm looking for uh, because it is too hard to, you know, to say that. And some of these offenses, and I've seen it for years, are, are more gimmicky offenses. A lot of screens and a lot of you know, what I call one-offs, where it's just like a, a specially designed play by their coach that gets somebody wide open as opposed to true drop-back pass game, which is what's going to happen at the NFL level. You're going to have to win playing the position at the NFL level. So I'm trying to pull those things out. You know, there, there'll be a number of guys. Uh, you know, so Jaden Daniels had an unbelievable special season, but he threw the same play over and over and over and over again. You know, which is great, but you're not going to be able to do that at the end of it. Like, you're not going to hit that. Your guy's not just going to be better than the other guy where I can throw an inside fade every single time and complete it. Like, it's not going to happen. Now, yeah, I can pull some things from that, and the throws that he makes are great. But, you know, I want to see guys like Bo Nix is probably a guy that I thought was asked to do the most in terms of scheme, number of plays, being able to read the different kinds of plays. And so you really like that part of it. Like he handled to me what seemed like a lot more volume uh, than other guys. And he made a lot of great decisions and he was very accurate. Didn't throw the ball down the field as much. So now you're, you're taking this and you're going, okay, that stuff's really, really good. But we didn't see enough of this, which he's going to have to do at the next level. So now where do you place these guys? And so that's the real hard part about it is that they're not all running NFL type offenses where you can get a true gauge of each and every one of them doing those things, you're trying to mix and match and piece together and say, well, they're really good at this. I don't know how that translates. Or they're really good at that. I don't know how this translates. And so, you know, again, you say you haven't played the position. I played the position. I watched the position. I still analyze the position. I coach the position. And I still have no idea which of these guys are going to be good at the next level because all of them are going to have to get better. All of them are going to have to improve or – they're going to have to play just as well, like Jaden Daniels. He's going to have to play just as well every year of his NFL career as he did last year. And it's like, okay, can he do that against better talent with a, you know, with, with a bigger playbook, with less time back there? And so, you know, it, it's such an inexact science because a, we're just simply taking what they did in college against inferior athletes, uh, or maybe their team was better than the opponent, and, and every week. And we're trying to project that forward. And then the second thing is, I don't care how good they are now. I've seen great, great college quarterbacks that don't make it in the NFL because they don't get better. They're the same guy in the NFL they were in college, and they get swallowed up. And so every one of these guys is going to have to get better also. So that's a whole nother evaluation. Like, which one of the you – know, like, we use the word ceiling. I'm sure you've used the word ceiling a million times in the draft. Hey, what's his ceiling? He's got a high ce – 
I don't know what a guy's ceiling is. I don't know his ceiling until he shows me what his ceiling. Like, show me that you can get better. Oh, well, then I guess you're you're not at your ceiling yet. Show me you can get better. But we throw that out there as if we know how good somebody can be in all these different facets, and that oh, they're just scratching the surface of what their ceiling can be. I, I have no idea. All I can go up is what they can do, what they've shown me they can do, because I don't know what else they can do until they show me that. You love turf. You're good at it. So you start a turf biz. Business grows. Your savings grow. Become the most celebrated name in turf. Are you ready for all that life brings? The Giants Huddle is brought to you by Citizens, the official bank of the Giants. From game day to everyday, Citizens is made ready for Giant fans with insights, guidance, and solution. Learn more at citizensbank.com. I love the context, and that's why I wanted to have you on, Kurt. Fantastic. Before we get into the individual players, you talk about guys needing to improve. When you see a young quarterback, what are some of the areas you think with the right coaching are the easiest to improve? Is it, you know, footwork? Is it technique? Is it something else? And what areas do you think are difficult for a quarterback to improve in that are maybe a little bit more instinctual and less teachable? Yeah, you know, another tough question because I think we're all built differently. And so being built differently, uh, whether that's mentally or physically, um, I think that question would be answered differently for different guys uh you know uh for me i was a guy that processed really well you know i tell people all the time when i went to college uh, i remember the one of the early days in practice i was asked to draw up cover four uh, when i went to college i had no idea what cover four was nobody had ever taught me any coverages uh to, to know what it, what it looked like and so that's what i was going off of but i was a really good processor of information so once you taught me and once you showed me and once i was able to learn it I was able to do it as well as anybody that I think has ever played the game. And so I had those skills. I just had to have somebody go, oh, here's what cover four is. Like, this is what you're looking for. This is how you attack it. And so that's kind of what would be my question for each of these guys is what are they good at? You know, so if they're good at taking, you know, technical teaching and being able to apply it and are willing to, to do those little things, then, yeah, I think that's something that can be coachable. But it takes time when you've been doing something a certain way. Processing. If you've never been taught really how to process or how to read, you know, one thing that I see a lot in college, and it's it's made its way into the NFL, uh, you know, Giants do uh, a, a lot of it, but the pure progression stuff, where it's less about reading defenders and it's more about just drop back and see if this guy's open. If he's open, throw it to him. If he's not, go to your number two and throw it to him if he's open. Go to your number. So it's automatic. They, they, they're progressing the same way no matter what the coverage is. And so, you know, if you've only done pure progression stuff and I've never asked you to read defenders and now you come into the NFL and I'm going to go, okay, we're not going to do this pure progression stuff. I need you to read defenses. I need you to read defenders. I need you to see the whole field. Some players probably can do that and just have never been taught that. Right. Other players might struggle with that because it's like, oh my gosh, like I got to see all this. I got to, I got to recognize all this and then, and then play like, I can't do it. So, you know, to your question, I would have to know each of the players and what they're capable of, what they're good at, what makes sense to them. I, I say this all the time when it comes to quarterbacks is that we all see the game differently. And so you could give a, a particular play to three different Hall of Fame quarterbacks and one would love it. One would say, ah, it's OK. And one might say, I hate it. And you're like, how is that possible? It's the same play. And they're all good players because we all see the game and attack the game different ways and so it would work really well for one guy and it, and it might not work as well for other guys and so so much of that plays into this process is who is this guy that I'm getting how does he fit into what we're doing or can I shape my offense around what I think his skill set is and what does that mix look like at the end of the day um, and so again I know I'm very vague with these answers because I think it is an inexact science across the board is that I, it's hard for me to judge these guys just watching tape. I want to get in a room with all of them and go, tell me why you threw this. So, again, I'll use Jaden Daniels as an example. Let's say they run this same play over and over again, a hitch route, five-yard hitch route on the outside, the inside fade, and then a stick route on the inside. Yep. And so I'll watch him in the course of the game come out. The cornerback's off on the outside, and he just comes out, boom, takes the hitch. And I'm like, perfect. That's what I want to do every time. That corner's off, take the hitch. And then four plays later, they run it again corners off and he doesn't throw the hitch and I want to know why like 
you just did it. It worked. It, to me, is the right read. Why did you come back four plays later and not do the same thing that you did earlier in the game? What, take me through your thought process because I want to know that. Because when I watch things like that and I go, I was successful one time, then not successful. Then successful, then not successful. Getting the same look, I'm, a, I'm starting to wonder, are you just getting lucky? Like, are you just coming out and going, oh, um, maybe I'll throw the hitch this time? And it works because you're not doing it every single time the same way. And so those are the things that make it really, really hard, especially on us, when all we're doing is watching tape and we don't get a chance to get into a room and talk to these guys and decipher things with these guys and, and break it down so I can hear their reasoning behind, you know, what they did on a particular play or, or at least how they're even reading a particular play every single time. Yeah, and Joe Shea makes the point with quarterbacks, you have to get them in a room and you have to do that stuff, and it's essential to do it. I'm with you. And, folks, if you want to know why the there's like a 50% hit rate on quarterbacks in the first <laughs> round of drafts, I hope yeah. you listen to the last 15 minutes because that is why it's really, really hard. All right, you mentioned a couple guys already, Kurt. Just a couple rapid fire, one question on each guy based yeah. on your analysis, and I'm curious what you're thinking about these guys. You already kind of talked about Jaden Daniels, so we can kind of skip him a little bit. Caleb Williams, you talk about – offenses with designer plays and if one guy's not open then you just figure it out well hello usc offense because that's what that was did you yeah. see enough of him on tape where you saw enough of him on time hitting guys in rhythm or do you think that's something that you need to see more of yeah i want to see more of it but I, I think over the last two years we've seen it you know a number of times where i feel like there's the capability is at least there you know i've seen i saw games this year where uh, games where he seemed to want to create all the time. And a lot of it, again, was because of the the system. There weren't guys open, so he had to create a lot. But then there were other games where I saw him fight to stay in the pocket. Even when his number one and number two weren't open, he would still work the pocket and he would stay there and he would work through progressions. And so when I see stuff like that, I'm like, okay, now that's more of what I think I'm going to need in the NFL is uh, you to to stay and fight to be a pocket passer and not look to create every single time. So you saw both sides of it, but I think when you see his body of work over the course of, you know, basically three years, you've seen enough of him playing on schedule and making big time throws. And then you've also seen the really special plays and the feel that he has when he gets out. And, and that's what I like more than anything is the feel when you create, you know, the feel to see certain throws to make certain kinds of throws. Um, you know, when you're out there, not just being a great athlete, but, the feel, and that's why I think he's likened to Patrick Mahomes a little bit, because Patrick's got a tremendous feel when he gets out there and gets creative of where guys are going and, and, and how to make different kinds of throws and, and how to buy a little bit of extra time to let somebody get open and, and those kinds of things. And Caleb has that kind of feel. So I think when you put it all together, because we've seen so much of a body of work from him, um, you know, you feel like you've seen enough of each component to say it's at least in there I may need to see a little bit more of it I need it may need you to live in this world a little bit more at the NFL level but I've seen enough of all the things to say okay I do believe he's capable of it um you know or at least he was capable of it at the college level um which you know at least makes me feel comfortable that I'm not taking a guy that I never saw him process or I never saw him fight to stay in the pocket and I'm hoping he can live in the pocket no, you know, that that's not what we saw from Caleb Williams. So so I feel comfortable that, you know, he's got a good array of things that we've seen on tape to at least say, okay, he's done that, he's done that, he's done that, he's done that. Now we've just got to keep, teach him to get better at all of those things. Are you okay on time for three more players quick, Kurt? Yeah, 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 I'm good. Perfect. All right, let, let's let go to Drake May. You talked about it in your video on him. And I saw, and I tried to do my work. I watched every drop back this year of Daniels, May, McCarthy, and who am I missing? Uh, Caleb Williams so, and, and Daniel. So all four of the top guys, I've watched every drop back. And with Drake May, you talk about it. I, I call it scatter shot, right? Sometimes his pass mm -hmm. is just whoop, and they're gone. Yeah. You attributed that in your video on NFL Plus to mechanical things with his feet, right? Yeah. Do you think with enough coaching that can get cleaned up, in which case you should take the flashes and kind of like the high is a little bit more seriously because you think some of that mechanical stuff can clean up some of the intermittent sloppiness and scatter shot and accuracy and consistency type of stuff. Yeah. I want to say yes, that it can be cleaned up and it can get better. Um, you know, the one thing I do know, just kind of talking to some people that have been around him is that that's been a bit of who he's been, you know, since, since he got to college, 
is that's part of, you know, his, his makeup um, that nobody's really been able to break him of up to this point. And so that's something that concerns me a little bit. Like if this is something that, you know, that's been there for a number of years, um, I would, you know, and again, I don't know how much he's, he's been coached not to do it, how much they've, they've spent time on it. But if that's part of your MO and it's something that you struggle with and that leads to a lot of inconsistencies, I would love to think somebody would get better over the three years in college right. to try to improve that aspect of things. Or is it just part of his nature? And part of what you're going to have to deal with is that you're going to miss some layups and you're going to have some inconsistencies because the technique is going to get away from him and he's going to be more of kind of a free-flowing athletic quarterback. Um, that concerns me a little bit. And so, um, you know, that's the part that, uh, you know, and there was a couple things, you know, that there was just a lack of technique at times just with his feet in the right spot. And there was a lot of bouncing. You know, I'm not a fan of the bouncing. There's a lot of guys in the NFL that bounce. And what I mean by that is they get back in the pocket and they just start bouncing up and down kind of on their toes or with a tight base. And then they've got to drop back down and get into their throwing position and throw it. Um, and so it it affects timing and it affects the ability to anticipate and get the ball out on time as soon as that window opens up. And so – yeah, those are things that really concern me because I saw a lot of it this last year and a lot of plays and I'm like, gosh, you just can't miss that. Like, and, and you can't miss it that bad or you got to be on time. You got to be ready down in the red zone with your feet or you're going to be late and, and you know, you're not going to be able to play catch up even though he's extremely talented physically. And so, you know, I just saw so much of it that it concerned me. You know, there was footwork issues with a lot of these guys at different times. And so that's a part of playing the position. Patrick Mahomes, I can look at him every week and go, ah, that was his footwork. You know, his footwork got away from him. But, you know, he makes up for it because he's got some special gifts that that he can uh, use to throw the football. So uh, so that's kind of my concern with Drake May is that I've just seen it a lot. And I know that it's been there for a while that, you know, as you bring him to the NFL, you say, okay, will he break that habit? Or how long will it take for him to break that habit and get more consistent with his throws? Um, because you know, obviously, like you said, you see a lot of the good stuff. I mean, you know, there's going to be moments with all these guys. I mean, it's the reason we're talking about it, that they have great moments and great games, but I want great consistency. I want guys that when they're making a throw, make the throw every time when they're making a read, they make the read every time. So that's what I'm looking for. And I just didn't see enough of that with, uh, with Drake may, you know, where I can feel fully comfortable that, Hey, if I take him. I can fix those issues and then I'll couple it with the athletic ability and, and we'll be off and running. You're ready for a change. Payday comes early with citizens. So go to that retreat. New you moves to the country. Now you're raising goats and launching a lifestyle brand. Are you ready for all that life brings? Giants fans love a winner. It's why they love citizens named a 2022 best bank in the U.S. by the banker. As the official bank of the Giants and sponsor of the huddle, Citizens is made ready for fans of Big Blue. Learn more at citizensbank.com. Uh, I think the McCarthy analysis is interesting because he played in an NFL-style offense with Jim Harbaugh in, in college, so there were some NFL concepts in terms of their routes, but yeah. he never really had to play from behind, right? He has the benefit of a great running game. Um, you talked about in, in your video, all his pa passes are flat, right? Like, he doesn't have great touch yeah. on deep balls. I noticed that, too, watching the tape. Everything is the same speed. I guess for a guy like McCarthy, do you foresee a world where he can improve to the point where he can elevate himself and has the overall package to be, you know, that top eight, carry the team, you know, Herbert, Burrow, Lamar, Rogers type of yeah. quarterback? Do you think that's in him if he puts everything together? Or do you think there's something there that might eventually hold him back from reaching those types of heights? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure he's that guy. I mean, first, like you said, we never really got to see it. So, you know, that's, that's kind of an unfortunate thing. Now, I think I only found one game where he threw the ball over 30 times, only one game where he had over 300 yards passing. Uh, and you're right, he didn't have to. And so, you know, it's a different world when you get to third and medium. And, you know, USC is in a dogfight every week, so we got to go for it. We got to try to get the third medium. In Michigan, we can hand the ball off or we can throw a screen and we can punt because we got a great defense and, and you know, we don't have to push the envelope. And so, you know, there's so many different ways in which you can look at it. The one thing I would say is, you know, I don't necessarily see the wow with J.J. McCarthy. I see why there's excitement. I see why 
he could be a really good NFL quarterback. Uh, you mentioned it, the system plays under center. Uh, you know, so he's, he's used to the play action stuff, turning his back to the defense. He can play in the shotgun. He can make the throws down the field. Um, you know, played in a, a more pro style in, in terms of some of the concepts that they ran than some of these other guys. So he's he's been asked to make some of those throws. So I understand why you're excited, um, you know, about him being a starter in the league. I just don't know. I haven't seen the wow factor um, that makes me say, okay, he can he can take it to another level, which doesn't mean he's going to be a bad quarterback. I mean, could he be a Jared Goff? Of course. You know, could he be – you know, Cousins. maybe, yeah, maybe a Kirk Cousins type, although I look at Kirk in a little higher regard in the terms of some of the throws that he makes yeah. than a lot of guys in the league, even though there's some deficiencies there. Just the way he throws the football is really good. But but yes, kind of in that mode a little bit more, um, you know, than than some other guys in the league that that kind of take over and carry a team with their right arm. And so like him, um, I don't know if I see the star power. But again, we, we we weren't asked, you know, he wasn't asked to do that. You know, we didn't get the chance to see that because they had to throw it every snap. So maybe it's in there and, you know, we just haven't had the the luxury of seeing it up to this point. But I see a guy that could I, could be a good, solid quarterback, a good leader, a guy that's going to need a good team around him, but can make, you know, the make the throws and, and the decision making and can win games for you, you know, make those throws in the moment that you need to win games for you. And so I see why people like him. Uh, I just don't know if he's got the upside, you know, that, that, that I see from some of those other guys. All right. And then Penix, Kurt down the field. And they have some NFL concepts in that system too, right? With their downfield passing game. He has a good arm. Uh, I wonder about his ball placement in like the intermediate areas. And you talk about that kind of internal GPS that Caleb Williams has to escape and be creative. I don't know if I saw enough of that with Penix and he's already a five-year player. Uh, that's why, for me, he's a, maybe more of like an early second round type of guy. I'm not sure he's going to get there. We could put the medicals yeah. aside. Uh, what are some of the things you saw from Penix where the highs are really, really high? I just wonder, yeah. you know, not behind a great offensive line with three NFL caliber receivers, how that's going to necessarily translate to the NFL. Yeah, yeah. I really like Michael Penix. I mean, when you watch him on tape and you just break down what he did on film, he was really, really good. And he was really good on the second level throws and the deep throws, which, you know, you can be consistent on those because I believe, you know, NFL quarterbacks are made, or at least they used to be made. You know, now it's a different world with all these throws at the line of scrimmage, but they used to, you know, have to be made with those second level throws, what I call chunk throws. Yeah. You know, that 15 to, to, to 35 yard throw is where you could really separate yourself. And I think he does that as well as anybody and was as accurate as anybody. I love the pace that he puts on the football. Um, you know, you can't always tell on tape, but when I watched him at the combine, um, you know, that jumped off the page for me, his ability to have a firm, but soft ball, an easy ball to catch yet. It was firm and, and had no problem getting to its location, you know, on the timing that it needed to. So I really like that. You know, he, he has a tendency to open up his technique a little bit, um, which can cause some, uh, you know, some inefficiencies at times, but even when he did that, he was, he was more accurate than I expected him to be when he, when he opened up that right foot and was kind of throwing back to his left side. I kept thinking, okay, he's going to miss this one because his technique's all off. And, and he would find ways to drop those throws in there. So I really like Michael Penning. I'm not, as I said at the beginning, I'm not a guy that, um, that falls in love too much with the athletic part of it. I think that is that should be a bonus. you got to play the position, you know, because I see it every year. And I see it every week that the quarterbacks that play the position and are most efficient inside the pocket yeah. are the ones that win every single week. Uh, you know, the special plays on the outside are great. And that's a huge bonus. And some guys can make a few more of those than others in the course of a game. But even guys like Lamar Jackson, their teams are better. They're more efficient when he plays on schedule in the pocket. Josh Allen, same way. He can be Superman. Teams are better when he plays in the pocket on schedule. And so, you know, with Michael Penning, I don't worry about the other stuff. Like, you know, all I need is a couple of those a game. And does he have the ability to, to you know, make a few moves or to buy a little bit of time in the pocket and make throws? Yeah, he does. Yeah. And so some guys like a Joe Burrow are going to be less apt to leave the pocket and they're going to dissect you in the pocket. And then they've got just enough athleticism to make a play with their feet or to buy some time and make a throw. That to me is, you know, more than anything, what I'm looking for. Because I want a guy that for 15 years can play the game the same way, 
and doesn't have to count on his athletic ability to carry him. I want to find a guy that understands how to play the position, can manipulate the pocket, can buy time, because I still think as much as everybody wants to say uh, you can't win in the league that way, I still think that's the way you win in this league. I see it every year in the playoffs. The guys that play the best in the pocket are the guys that advance 95% of the time. So, yes, it can still win. Make decisions, get the ball out of your hands, get it to the guys that are faster than you, get it to the guys that are more athletic than you, um, and that's where you win football games. So, um, you know, so I think he does have enough movement. He can manipulate the pocket, right? You know, Drew Brees. Drew Brees didn't do a lot of stuff athletically, but he was really good at manipulating the pocket and buying time to be able to get that throw off down the field. Tom Brady was another one. And I think Michael Penix has shown the ability to quickly adjust the pocket, reset, get the ball out of his hands and make throws. And I think there's enough there for sure to, um, you know, to be a top quarterback in the NFL if all the other pieces come along. And as you said, the medical, I, I just, I don't know how you deal with that because on tape, I would probably put Michael Penix number three in this draft with what he did week in and week out on tape this year. But you know, when you're talking about, you know, season end injuries over and over again, um, knowing that it's been different issues, I, you know, I would be afraid, you know, because the history is there. I would be afraid to draft him too high because if he did suffer an injury, you know, it's easy to say, well, that was all there in front of you. We knew this was part of his past, which is unfortunate because he's played a couple great years without getting injured um, and shown his ability. I just don't know how NFL teams are going to uh, manage that and handle that. Kurt, I love your perspective. Thank you so much. Just fantastic and wonderful. Uh, once again, you talk about quarterback confidential. Everybody go check that out, please. Kurt, thanks so much for the time, and we'll talk to you again real soon. You got it. Sounds good. Yes, I look forward to catching up after the draft and see uh, see how you guys made out. Kurt Water on the Giants Auto Podcast. Thanks for being with us, everybody. We'll see you next time.